So just before we begin, there is no session after this one, so we can have questions go past 12.30. Uh, if you do have a question, just come up to the mic. Other than that, I'll turn it over to Yoshi to take it away. Hello. Uh, my name is Yoshinori Takesako. Uh, it's a very long name, so uh, it's uh, difficult for us. So please call me Yoshi. Uh, it's a short name. Uh, I came from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, B-side Las Vegas is the first time for me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Who am I? Uh, I am a chairman of the SECCON. Uh, SECCON is the largest security CTF contest in Japan. I am a CTF organizer and a challenge creator. I am also on the Open Web Application Security Project, uh, OASP Japan Advisory Board. And I am a review board of for the Code Blue, which is the biggest international security conference in Japan. Okay, uh, second CTF is uh, one of the DEF CON CTF qualifying contest in this year. Uh, in this year, about uh, 2,500 people took part in the second CTF qualifier from uh, about uh, 58 countries around the world. Uh, we held the International Second City Final Competition in this year at Tokyo, Japan. Finally, Korean hacker team had won. Uh, that was great. I want to show the Nirvana Kai Second Customized Mark II. Uh, this is a real-time visualization system for the attack and defense battle of CTF. Okay. I will show the movie. Yeah. This real-time visualization system was developed by the National Institute of Information and Communications Technology, NICT, in Japan. The orange hexagon prism is uh, showing the 24 teams competing in the finals. The blue hexagon and prism surrounding it show the CTF challenge servers and their current state. The yellow hexagonal prism shows the team to solve the challenge. The traffic between the team and the challenge servers are shown in real time. Uh, it's a team display game. Uh, when the team's orange hexagonal prism gets uh, enlarged, their IP address gets shown as a crystal and the traffic between individual IP addresses and the display. Each team's hexagonal prism is divided horizontally into two layers displaying their current attack and defense points. Uh, this is tower mode. The challenge server is stuck up in the tower. The orange hexagonal prism is representing the team's group as the team's accumulated more points. 
the orange lines shooting out to represent the team attacking the challenge servers. Yeah, this is a top fun. Yeah, it's very fun. Okay. Later. A little bit louder. Okay. 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 I talk about the back during Microsoft Office document with secret master keys. We made a lot of CTF challenges, such as XSS, uh, reversing, porn, and cryptography at the SecCon CTF project. When I created some cryptography challenges, I found that this backdoor problem. Uh, Microsoft Office 2010 or later version employ Agile encryption algorithm in their OOX documents. We found a vulnerability in the file format specification that can allow an attacker to read or decrypt strongly encrypted documents without the password. This is possible by tricking Microsoft Office into uh, into create creating an undetectable secret master key when it creates encrypted documents. Uh, Microsoft has standardized the, the OOX file format by ECMA International. Uh, it is not OpenOffice XML format. Uh, OpenOffice is a rival application for Microsoft, so Office Open XML format is correct. Uh, you can see that uh, docx uh, suffix from file name. Uh, and you know it is uh, just a zip archive file. However, when you encrypt the docx file, it will become an old classical, classical doc file format. This encrypted docx file has a docx suffix but it is not the zip archive file. You can see that the file hex dump header D0CF11E0, uh, it is a doc file read chapters. Um, all the classical doc file format has been standardized as a MSCFB. Uh, this is specifications documentation was opened by Microsoft. Uh, I think it is a great job. Yeah. Uh, MSCFB file format has some many FAT sectors. Uh, mini FAT has a, a 64 byte small sector size. Um, mini FAT sectors are in the standard chain in the FAT structure. Um, this is a figure of a file layout of an encrypted docx file. Uh, any encrypted docx file ha have uh, this file in many fat sectors. Uh, encryption package is a binary file uh, which was encrypted from original docx zip file object. Uh, encryption inf is very important information for these encryption parameters. Microsoft opened uh, this uh, Office cryptography uh, structures as MS Office Crypto. Uh, we tried to read the, uh, this document carefully. Yes, we can read the binary of docs X file. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to protect your document with passwords, in Microsoft Office, you can use password to help prevent other people from opening or modifying your documents. Select the Protect Documents menu on Info tab, Information tab. You can choose some sub-menu. When you select Encrypt with Password, the Encrypted Document dialog box appears. In the Password box, uh, type a password and confirm password, then encrypted docx is saved. <coughs> D 
there are another manipulation. Uh, you can select the Save As menu and push a tool button and uh, select the general, general option. Then you can input the password just the same way. It is important to know that you don't forget the password uh, because Microsoft cannot retrieve your forgotten passwords. Uh, if you forget the password, we cannot retrieve the original documents. But it is true. I cannot decrypt actually. For them, this occurs. There is a password recovery software. Uh, OCL Hashcat is one of the famous password recovery tools by command line. If you want to crack password protected Microsoft Office documents, uh, type this command. It is very easy. Uh, recently, OCL Hashcat supports GPGPU power and supported a new Office document OX file format. Before, you have to extract hash value from encrypted file by office to john dot ph uh, py. Uh, this is a Python script. Okay, there are another password recovery software with simple user interface. Uh, I use the password recovery commercial edition, uh, which is very powerful password recovery tool. It's very simple graphic user interface. Only clicking. Click, click, click. It can decrypt. I evaluated comparing the decryption time of password cracking. There are some encryption file format, uh, classic zip file and AES zip and old doc file and uh, new doc X files. You can see that uh, docx files are very strong against the brute force attack. Password consists of Latin small characters and Latin capital characters and digits and special symbols characters. If the password range is eight, uh, time required to decrypt the encrypted classical uh, zip file by brute force attack was uh, 15 minutes. Its encryption key bit is only uh, 96 bit. Um, WinZip has a uh, AES encryption. Time required to decrypt to the encrypted new WinZip file by brute force attack was uh, six days. Time required of brute force attacking has increased uh, gradually with office versions is newer. This is a poor password. Yeah. And password consists of Latin small characters and Latin capital uh, characters and digit characters. Uh, if the password rank is 8, uh, docx's time required of brute force attacking was about 20,000 years with office version is 2013. Uh, it's very long time, I think so. Uh, password consists of uh, <laughs> uh, 97 letters, which include Latin small characters and Latin capital characters and digit and special symbols characters. If the password length is 8, uh, with 2013 docx time required, the brute force attacking was about 67 million years. And if the password length is 10, uh, you will not be able to decrypt even coming the next big bang. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Uh, this program code is a password, uh, password checking and decoding algorithm. Uh, please attention the line that the secret key is used. Decode 
encrypted data is dependent on only secret key and the key data sort value. Uh, it is not dependent on password. I think this, this is a problem. I will show you another picture, uh, fi figure. Uh, this is a figure of a dependency of value in decoding. Decoded content is dependent on only secret key and key data sort value. It is not dependent on password. It is a problem. No? Okay, this is a figure of a dependency of values in encoding, uh, encryption. Uh, there are a problem with generating the secret key. The secret key used in AES encryption needs to create a unique key with random data. So if the key is long enough and was created with truly random data, then it is thought to be exterminated, uh, difficult to crack. However, if the secret key was chosen in a uh, predictable manner, then it will be easy to crack. The integrity of secure random generators, both software and hardware-based, are uh, imperative for strong encryption. So we made the encryption and decryption tools for new Microsoft Office DocX and XLX and PPTX files command. Uh, we call the msofficecrypt.exe. Uh, this is the usage of these tools. I would like to introduce my friends. Uh, Shigeru Mitsunari is a software developer and researcher at Cyborg Labs company. Uh, she developed this MS Office Crypt Exe tools. Uh, I was working together with him. Uh, he's a uh, co-author of this paper. Okay, uh, MS Office script command has a decode with inputted password option. Uh, it is minus D and minus P. Uh, tap this command, uh, dem1 xlx generated to dem1 uh, under the decoded xlx. And we made a decode with the master key options mode. Uh, it is a minus K option. Uh, 00112233 EEFF. Yeah. Okay. And we made the encode option. It is minus E. Uh, then we have a minus E and minus K and minus P options. We can make two encrypted files by another password with same master key. Oh, and so it is backdoor. Okay, I will show you some demos. Speak up. Yeah. In this demo, uh, demo one XLS is encrypted with the password uh, PASS. The target software is Microsoft Excel uh, 2013. Demo two XLX is encrypted with another password PASS1234. However, Microsoft Office was manipulated to implant the hidden master key when these files were created. Therefore, uh, these files can be easily decrypted by same master key without any need to brute force the password. In this example, the master key is set to 00112233 and then uh, FF0011221 uh, FF. Okay. okay, I will show them. Okay. 
there demo one uh, dot xls. Uh, type password uh, pass uh, password language is four. Uh, this is very privacy data, so I want to protect it, uh, this document file and change the password. Uh, PASS one two three four uh, password rank is eight eight uh, demo two XLS and uh, selected the generate general option uh, type of pass PASS one two three four and uh, retype the PASS one two three four okay okay uh, save. It's generated a demo to uh, XLS. Type the uh, PASS1234. This is uh, password length is 8. Okay. So we made a MS Office Crypto Exit 2. So decode option the, uh, with secret master key mode. So it can decode it easily. And it's the same key, same master key. No require your password, so. and uh, start a demo too. Yeah, yeah. Don't require the uh, password. Um, minus V option is a bypass mode, so uh, this shows uh, some hex done. This is a secret key to the other one, one, two, two, three, three, four, okay. Okay. So I consider the attack vectors. Uh, first attack vector is that an attacker can replace the random generation function by Windows API hooking. There are so many API hooking techniques. Uh, IAT import address table function hooking is one of the famous Windows API hooking techniques. And moreover, there are Windows API overwrite uh, 32 and 64 application. It is very nice software. Uh, I like it. Yeah. And Microsoft Research uh, created a general purpose function hooking in library, uh, the two hours. It can easily hook the application by DLL injection. Uh, in this case, I can hook the cryptogen random function on ADV API uh, 32.dll. Then hook the uh, cryptogen random function always return the fixed value. Uh, zero x three 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 three. In other case, I can hook the uh, CP gen random function on all the Windows API. Hook the CP gen random function uh, always returns a fixed value, which is a not random value. In another case, I can hook the RTL random get bytes function on SAL3.dll, which is used by LibreOffice uh, application. I can control the randomness on my own computers. Okay, second vector is that some attackers can replace the random generator in embedded hardware chips. <laughs> Uh, Intel developed the read random instruction in the hardware chips, uh, Quai 7, so on. It's generated truly random by Intel's new hardware chips. Of code is this C. The procedure device uh, slash, devil, uh, slash random generates a virtually endless stream of random numbers on GNU Linux systems. Uh, which are crucial for encrypting information in a secure manner. 
as in random is an interaction found in modern Intel CPU chips that established the high quality and high performance entropy. <coughs> generated random number in the given CPU register. Uh, this hopefully uh, unpredictable values are vital in producing secure session keys, new public private keys, and padding in modern encryption technology. It's feared that spooks uh, within some government intelligence agencies have managed to pursue uh, Intel to or uh, hope that interaction or otherwise ensure uh, its output uh, produces value that weakens the strength of encryption algorithms uh, relying on that random data. Linus Thomas' uh, answer is very short. Uh, we use the RD random as one of the many inputs into the random pool, and we use it as a way to improve that random pool. So even if RD random were to be backdoored by some government intelligence agencies, our use of RD random actually improves the quality of the random numbers you can get from a uh, slash dev slash random. So, Linus slash dev uh, slash random seems like the safety. I think so. That uh, We can get uh, source code of Linux, and this is because it can be verified uh, binaries on your own machines. However, what is the cloud environment? Third attack vector is that some attackers can use the uh, predictable number generator uh, secretly in cloud environments. Uh, recently, Microsoft released an Office Online. Uh, you can try this one as uh, Office 2016 Preview Edition. Uh, the Office application will be on the Microsoft cloud system. Uh, I think that we can not stop these cloud system movement now. We should check how to the uh, how the cloud encryption algorithm and the encryption system is safety. I think that is important things. Uh, some industry companies become to have an uh, interested in safety encryption system. Okay. Conclusion, uh, recent uh, Microsoft Office uh, 2010 or later version uh, OX documents are uh, normally encrypted very strongly, uh, making them difficult to brute force attack. However, uh, there are techniques an attacker can use to secretly backdoor these encrypted documents to make them uh, trivial to decrypt. Cloud environments may be more dangerous uh, than through as it is not possible for users to confirm the security of their encryption. And it would be easy for cloud providers or advanced attackers with access to do these cloud providers to backdoor encryption in undetected ways. Okay. That's all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, and I want to say thanks for some supported members. Uh, I'm not got good at English. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, okay. that's all. So if you have questions, just come up to the microphone. I'm sure our uh, speaker will stick around here for a bit. Uh, thanks.